as the great Professor Loxham used to say, who was my freshman physics professor and was a Yankee, we're going to talk about talk. Of course, he pronounced it wrong. It's pronounced towork. But I'll go somewhere in between. My simple definition of torque is a force around an axis. And as you can imagine, it's what causes things to rotate, as we've been talking about. We've actually seen quite a few torques so far in this class. So there was this one. Remember this one? Ow. Yeah, so when I slowed down that bike wheel with my bare hands, remember that? Well, let's look at that again. That was the case of a bike wheel was spinning. Uh, it had an axis right down the center. It was going around kind of like this. And I used my hand um, to apply a force to it. So it was spinning like that. We basically used the force of my hand and we reduced the uh, magnitude of the angular velocity. And I did that by applying a force this way to the edge of the wheel. And that was a torque. So one thing you can do with it is you can slow something down. Um, another one is, remember, when we were talking about the different moments and how mass is distributed. And I like held that thing up, and it was so heavy. And when I put the mass at the end, we could barely lift it. And we couldn't lift it. And then it looked like I did, but it may have been a camera trick. So when we did that, that thing looked like this. So here was the handle. And I was trying to rotate it around the handle. And then the rod went way down like this. And it had a big, heavy mass on the end like that. That's where all the moment was in that mass. What I was doing with my hand is I was trying to overcome the gravitational pull. Right? Gravity was pulling it down, so I was trying to overcome gravitational, actually, torque, not just force, because I was applying a force to the handle. So let's see, I was pulling really hard. I was applying a force to the handle from the top, kind of like that. Right? That's the force of my hand applied that time. So again, I was applying a torque, trying to overcome a different torque. Um, another one we can find, and we have to go way back to uh, electricity and magnetism. Oh, he looked young. Um, is just holding a rod. Right? So here is the uh, Teflon rod from electricity and magnetism. And when I hold it, I'm applying a torque because it's not rotating, is it? Gravity wants to make it rotate. Let's look at this rod and see what's actually happening here. So here's the rod, like that. And uh, here what I'm doing is balancing the gravitational torque. Let's see if we can see it. Gravitational. Because we know that for an object like this rod, the force acts at the center of mass. And since it's uniform, the center of mass is in the middle. So there's mg. If I let go of the rod, mg pulls it down. But let's imagine, let me simplify how I'm holding it here. Let me hold it uh, like, um, like that. No, let me hold it with two fingers. Holding it up with two fingers. One pushing up and a little farther out, one pushing down like that. So if I hold it that way, let's see. So one finger was pushing down like this, and one was pushing up like that. So this finger on the bottom sets the rotation axis. If this thing's going to rotate, it's going to be about that finger, because it can't move into my finger. It can only go around my finger. So if that's the rotation axis, then basically the torque that gravity is creating, I was having to cancel with the torque from my finger. So I was applying a torque. This finger also has to apply quite a bit of force because it has to overcome the weight here and here to also keep it from translating. So we have to match the balance, the translational forces to keep it from falling. But we also have to balance the torque forces, the forces that create torques, to keep it from rotating, to hold it still. So those are just three examples of torque that you've already seen. And now we're going to learn how to calculate them.